the scissors where my kidney is. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. In your back, in your back. And here's the other one on the other side. My kidney doesn't function right. It's supposed to work right. I take all the dirty stuff out. Hello, 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 hello. We're going to eat the, this day room. They, they give the children an injection and they pull blood and then they see the children is better. And this is Aiki, where the sick children is. I used to lay there in the middle here on the side when I, when I go for my operation. And I used to lay here also when I go for my operations. That boy is a transplant boy. He's a transplant. And that one is a transplant here. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Costa. How old are you? Eight. What's wrong with you? I have kidneys. <laughs> kidneys? How do you feel about it? <coughs> Once upon a time, no, no, man, do something like this. One day, I woke up, I was swollen. My feet, my tummy, my face. And my legs. My mommy Thomas could dress me because she see how swollen was my feet. And so they took me to the doctor. He did give a letter to my mommy to send me up. And so the doctor did see me. And so they did pour blood. And I did shout and I did fight. And I cry. They put me in the wood, give me a drop. So they send me up to eat too. And so I sleep here for wait, wait, wait. Six days. And so the Wednesday I went home. And then I came back again. So they did give me another drop and so I had to go for a biopsy and I came out I was sleeping. When I wake up, I saw my granny. That is the treat, my little. Hello, Kota, how are you? Fine. Did you have your medication today? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I have to take 14 tablets in the morning and at night. It's not nice because every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I get injection at 11 o'clock. When I have an injection, then I always take somebody's hand to squeeze. And then when they Finish, then I say, I didn't feel that. <laughs> the worst part of being sick is you can't eat anything. I can't eat chips. I can't eat um, sausage, macaroni and cheese. I can't eat banana. I can't eat. Mm, baloney. My kidneys is not working right. Now I must take one out and get me a kidney, a new one. My daddy over done. I'm going to talk with my mommy. I'm Coach Mom. My name is Fido Sali. Why did you cry when I got injection? Because if I see you in pain, I'm in pain. When are the doctors going to kill I died for the kidney? Well, I think this year, 2009, is our year. We're still waiting on doctors' feedback, but 
I don't know so long we get the kidney this year. Okay. Henny's daddy going to give my kidney. Well, daddy's gonna give the kidney, as I said. Everything is in process, so the thing is, the only time is uh, we're waiting on the doctors. We can do nothing without them, and they can do nothing without us. The only year only started now, so everything is still fresh, but this year is going to be our year. Okay. Is there anything else? I would really like to know how you're really coping with all of this. Fine. <laughs> everything is fine. Give me more in detail. Mm, I'm happy. And that was the end. Flight, 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 my story is out. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Uh, it always amazes me to hear children's insights and understanding of issues that affect them. The problem is that adults seldom listen to what children have to say. And more often than not, they make assumptions, or we make assumptions, about what the children need and what they want. Sick children are not different. They have the right to know as much as possible about matters that affect them, to understand and to be involved with their illnesses and the health care that is provided to them. They need information about the hospital environment and what is expected, their health condition, diagnostic procedures and treatment options, possible outcomes of these treatments, the degree of likely pain and discomfort, and above all, to be able to ask questions and be reassured of the support and care that they will receive from their parents, caregivers, and health workers. It is for this reason that the Children's Radio is being established under the auspices of the Red Cross Children's Hospital Facility Board and supported by the Children's Hospital Trust. Imagine a radio mainly run by children, providing them with the opportunity to connect with other children and adults by sharing opinions, asking questions, telling stories, sharing entertainment, and creating vibrant networks. These are just some of the opportunities to be gained. The building of the broadcasting studio at the entrance of Red Cross Medical Outpatients has been completed yesterday. It will be the first thing that children and parents will see when they walk into the hospital. The equipment will be installed in the next two weeks. To begin, and I'm going to ask them to stand now, together with my colleagues, Noluyolo, Ramabina, and Wayne, you can start. <laughs> Thank you. We officially start working to establish the Red Cross Children's Radio. We hope to be on air by April, May, 2017. I have walked into the Red Cross Children's Hospital, I don't know, thousands of times since I started working there in 1982. But the day in January 5th, 2009, that I walked into the hospital, it was different. This time I saw and I experienced the hospital in a completely different way. Each of the child reporters that we have trained took us through a tour of the places they know well, with the field recorders hanging from their shoulders and the microphones in their hands, they walk through the familiar places 
talking to the people are telling about their own experiences of being sick. The corridors, the lifts, the wards, the ICU took a different dimension when seeing them through the children's eyes and listening to their stories. It was a privilege and a humbling experience. In reflecting on the training workshops that we ran at that stage, we are confident that the Red Cross Children's Radio can make a difference and have an impact on healthcare workers, hospital management, parents, and of course, the children themselves. You just listen to Cother now. That was eight years ago. Cother got her kidney last year. She's 16 years old and will be running her own slot in the radio station. Now I want to introduce you to somebody that is not with, he, with us anymore, Noni. She died two years ago, but she was very happy for us to share her words and her programs. And listen for yourself and see what you think. Hello, my name is Nonkanyi Sompanga. I come from Eastern Cape. And I stay in St. Joseph's home. <laughs> I don't like really to stay in St. Joseph's home, but I can't do nothing because I'm sick. I first vomit the blood, and then I come to hospital, and then the doctor say I have an infection. The doctor say I have a heart problem. And then till then it's five August, I go to Hotisco for two months, and then I come back to Red Cross. And then they say, I have a lung problem also. And they say, I'm going to stay with oxygen for permanent. 15 years old girl, suffering a life, two sickness, heart disease and lung disease. And I miss my friends and my family. To all the nurses and the doctors, Happy New Year of 2009. I hope they enjoy their work. And I say thank you for all the things they've done for the children in the Trust Hospital. And I, I just hope I will enjoy this year and stop getting sick. And I want to do a question to one of the sisters or one of the doctors. And I want to ask how they manage, how they feel inside if this children was Tell children what they will feel. My name is Dimitri Erasmus, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Red Cross War Memorial Children's Hospital. Um, how may I help you this morning? How do you feel inside in your heart? When do you hear that one of our children is dying? How do you feel about that? I feel very sad when any child is ill. So any child who comes here who is ill, I feel very sad about it. So I feel even sadder if I know that a child is going to pass away. But, you know, I think it's part of, of life, part of growing up, but it's a very difficult one, whether you're a child or an adult, to be able to come to terms with somebody who's so ill that the person's going to die. It's very difficult. My brother was killed very young in an accident. My other brother also died traumatically when he was uh, 14. He drowned. So as a child, and I was around about 10 at that time, I've experienced loss in my family with my brothers. So I know very deeply, you know, what it is for a child to experience that in his or her life. So it's difficult. But then we come to a hospital like Red Cross where children come very ill and they get better. So the hospital and any hospital and any clinic is in fact an area of hope. Because there's hope that you'll actually get better and hope that you go home and join your family and feel renewed again. But yes, of course, not everybody who is ill can be cured and healed 100%. Does that answer your question? Thank you very much. I just want to say thank you for all the doctors and the nurses, the things they've done for all the children, getting better and go. And we've got to thank you for always giving us a good laugh and always being so cheerful. Thank you. Hi, people. That was Sister Wingley from B1 Retro Hospital. <laughs> Sometimes I feel so sad. 
Sometimes I try alone because I think to say my heart is leaking. I caught my heart leaking, but no one put a hole in my heart. There's a lot of people that say they have sickness, but they're getting better and getting home. I'm just trusting in God. Trusting God. I just hope my family prays a lot for me. And I pray myself. I hope God bless you, bless you all of you. And I hope I'll get better and go home to my family. Okay. Thank you so much. Hopefully, in the next Child Priorities Conference, we have child reporters that can come and interview all of you. Thank you. Thank you.